Hey everyone, welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. Today's two minute tip is another viewer requested one. If you have a viewer requested two minute tip, drop them in the comments below. But today we're talking about ink pads. Now I'm gonna to talk to you about ink pad storage and about proper storage too. So lots of you ask me, now do I store my ink pads this way up? this way up, this way up, what's right, what's wrong? Well, there are lots of different schools of thought, so I went around, I spoke to some ink pad manufacturers, I spoke to some chemists, and I spoke to a few different people, and the consensus is you can store them however you would like. I've also run a few trials in my craft room, this is what my top drawer looks like that I always reach in next to me. This is a tray I have in there and we will have it as part of the studio tour but it's just a cutlery organizer and I'll link it in the description below for you. But I love it because I can keep my adhesives in there and things but these are all of my black inks. Now I tend to reach for either my My Favourite Things Extreme Black or my Gina K Amalgam which are right at the front here or my Catherine Pula Midnight Black. So they're the ones that are at the front but they're all stored on their side and they've been like this for well over a year they're all still juicy they all still work perfectly and so it stays like this and it works really well for me I can also store all of my tapes and things in here and this works really well so storing them on their side makes no difference at all your ink is a suspended medium and that's why it doesn't matter whether you store it this way this way or this way it's all going to work exactly the same way and it's not going to dry your ink pads out it's not going to make any difference to the way your ink pads function. So as I say, I've spoken to lots of different people, they all tell me the same thing, you can store them however works best for your craft room. So if you like to be able to see the front of your ink pads, you want to have them like this in a drawer, that is fine. If you want to store them like this because that's how you've always stored them, you can do that because sometimes the labels are easier to see that way. If you want to store them like this, which is how I have a lot of mine stored, and if you want to see how I store my Distress Inks, you can check that top right hand corner because I have the Alex Draws from Ikea and I really like how my Distress Inks are stored and I have all of my inks pretty much apart from that one tray stored like that. And I have a few different storage options for you. So this is how I have my Nuvo ink cubes stored at the moment because I travel a lot with these for classes and events. And this is great because I can pop these in a box and off I go. And until recently, there were only enough cubes to fill one of these. We now have a lot more coming out, so I'm gonna expand. But this was perfect. These are the Distress Ink Cube tins. And I took the lids off. They have a little tray inside, so you can see they don't move around. So if you only have a few ink cubes, this is a great system. And they will fit in drawers and things. And so you can take the lids off if you want to, because I found opening and closing the lids a little bit kind of, I couldn't really be bothered, to be honest, is the honest answer. Um, I put a few different types of ink out here. If you want to know about different types of ink, again, you can check that top right hand corner. We did Inktoberfest last year and we have a whole playlist about every different type of ink you can imagine. We'll be doing it again next, this year even. Um, again, that's in October. We go through every day, we give you different types of ink, we talk you through them, we give you different ideas and we'll be doing a similar thing this year. But we have hybrid inks, dye inks, archival inks, everything you could possibly imagine. Now one thing I'm also gonna tell you about ink, and you're gonna notice this, so scrapbook.com do some amazing inks, um, and the one thing I noticed is I actually read the back of their inks. I will give you some links in the video description to these. These are hybrid inks, and I did do a review of them when they first came out. Again, you can check the top right hand corner for this review. But what you can do with their inks is you can clip the lids onto the bottom so that you have a handle to use them with, which I think is a really neat idea. So that's a fun um, thing. And the one thing they do is if you look on the front here, it says orange four. So there's an orange three, an orange two, and an orange one. And the same with the pinks and the reds, etc., etc. They're also a hybrid formula, they're all hybrid. So if you use the uh, layering stamps a lot, you can use hybrid inks and the layering stamps, and you're always gonna have all the different shades you need for layering. So I think that's a really neat idea too. But when you start looking at all of these different stamp pads, you may notice they all kind of have something in common. That's because on the whole, a lot of inks are made by the same manufacturers. So you're also gonna notice that there's a lot of consistency between inks. People choose their own shades and things like that because they can just mix the dyes. But you'll also notice that a lot of pads are gonna look the same in the sense of felt. Um, Hero Arts do these wonderful ombre ones, so these are cut up. But you're also gonna notice that a lot of them have this raised felt pad. 
Um, so it's not just you that notices that. But the other great thing is it means they're easy to store because they're consistent sizes. So if you find one storage option that works for you, you're gonna find that all ink pads are pretty much easy to store in that sense. So I'll move those out of the way. Your distress oxides and your archivals. Again, um, you can see my distress oxide storage. I linked that up earlier in the video. And archivals either come in a full size or a mini pad. If you get the minis, there are tins available. Super easy to store too. One other option I wanted to give you are the cube storage trays. I love these. You can fit three of these into a wide Alex drawer and you can get them in individuals or you can get them in sets of three. You can actually fit four in a drawer, but they sell them in threes. The idea being you can fit two side by side, one on top, and then the one on top can slide backwards and forwards. I do put four in my drawer just because I need to maximize my space. Um, but again, they're really awesome. And you can see here you have your um, channels to pop them in and then you can just kind of slide out and you've got those options. So I have my Ulta new ones in this one. I have one for my Lawn Fawn cubes, one for my LDRS cubes, one for my Hero Arts cubes. And then I store them in the blending fours. And then at the bottom here, I have this four and so on and so on. So I hope that has helped you if you asked the question about proper ink pad storage, how to store it, and some storage options. If you have a request for a two minute tip, say, don't forget to pop it in the comments below. We do read all of your comments and we try to reply to as many as possible. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications of all of our videos. We have tips, tricks, techniques, hauls, new products every single day for you at Hedgehog Hollow, including our fantastic subscription kit which you can find out more information about in the description below. Plus exclusive coupon codes from Tonic Studios, Ellen Hudson, Gina Kay, all of your favorite companies. So you can check those out and you can get them in our Friday newsletter available at thehedgehoghollow.com. If you enjoyed today's videos, give us a thumbs up and I will see you again tomorrow. Happy stamping everyone. Bye.